This style of training changed everything for me. And because of it, I've gone from this to this. Anyways, this is what I did so you can do it too. And the change I made was I started practicing calisthenic skills, which don't be turned away from if you're at a lower fitness level. There's a progression for everyone and I can show you how you can build up the strength in this video. And through working your way up through the progressions and learning new skills, you're gonna become the type of person who has a six pack and you're gonna see a major benefit to your physique. And I think even bodybuilders should be training these movements. Let's get into it though. These are the four calisthenic exercises that I think everyone should train. Starting with the L set, this is a staple exercise for calisthenics and it helps train your core and your hips. The first progression is just trying to lift yourself up. So just get to a countertop or put two chairs together and try to lift your knees up. When I first did this one, it was like torture, so just stick with it. Then you can tuck yourself into a ball and try to hold that. From there, you can push one leg out and alternate between them. Then we can start to extend it a bit with a bent leg hold and just try to push your legs out there as far as you can. Finally, we can lock our legs out and get that L sit or V sit if you wanna go further in the alphabet. I wouldn't try to Z sit though because I don't think it's possible. I tried. Those are the progressions, but while you train this one, you wanna pick the hardest progression you can do and try to hold it for 10 to 15 seconds. After two to three sets, you're probably gonna get tired, so just go to a lower progression or start doing other core exercises that I'll show later. Try and train this exercise two to three times a week and you'll really start to see some progress. And your thighs might cramp when doing this exercise, but eventually it will stop happening. So just drink your water, push through it, stay consistent, and eventually it will go away. But let's move on and talk about the front lever. This strengthens our back and our core, and it looks cool. This takes some strength to build up too though, so we have to start with dragonflies and front lever progressions. Dragonflies is that core exercise from Rocky where you're grabbing onto something sturdy and then slowly lower your body up and down. But it's a difficult exercise on its own, so we have to build up to it. And we do that by slowly extending our body, starting in a tucked position, going up and down like that, and then slowly pushing out one leg. And once we can do it with one leg, we can start to move to an advanced tuck. And then with time and training, we can just slowly extend and push our legs all the way out. You wanna remember for this one that negatives are gonna be very beneficial. So make sure to throw those in there while you're training it and try to get 10 perfect reps before you move on to the next progression. That's the dragonfly progressions, but we can also work the front lever progressions. Starting with a tucked lever, it looks really lame, but even tucking yourself up into a ball like that is actually kind of difficult. So practice that one until you can extend it a little bit and go into advanced tuck. From there, once you have that down, you can poke a leg out and alternate between them. And now we're getting stronger and we can move to straddle lever or super advanced tuck which just really isn't even tucked anymore. And with practice, we're finally there and we can do the front lever. There's a lot of ways to work the front lever and you want a solid base of core strength and also maybe try to add in weighted pull-ups as a strong back is really gonna help you. But this was my front lever workout that I did when I was really training it. I start with front lever attempts, which when I started, they were pretty pathetic. Then I start to do a few front lever holds at the highest progression I can do. And then I focus on the negative of the movement and really try to push myself with that one and really try to fight it on the way down. And then I finish it off with dragonflies. Now for the human flag. I'm still working towards this one. I can't do it just yet. I'm 6'3", so cut me some slack. But just training this progression alone is gonna help us make our obliques pop. It's also gonna help us with our pushing and our pulling strength, as all three are needed to hold yourself into that position. To progress in this movement, we can start with side planks and then add a little dip to it. If you wanna make it easier, you can elevate yourself a little bit. And if you wanna make it harder, you can put it on a decline. But really try to feel it in your obliques as you go up and down. Another one we can practice is side planks with the leg raise. And that's a great one to help us progress towards this flag as well, just building up some strength. We have some more strength now, so we can do 45 degree flags. These work the same muscles as a human flag, just at a slightly less angle, so it's gonna be a little easier. And try to hold this one for 10 to 15 seconds and increase the angle as it gets easy. We're starting to get really strong, so we can start to kick into a flag and try to hold that negative as long as possible. For me, it's not that long, but we're working on it. And just try to do it. The more you try to do something, the better you're gonna get at it. And now we're a flag. Now we can talk about the handstand, and this one's a fun one to do, and it isn't as taxing on the body as the other movements, so you can train it a little bit more if you'd like. But to learn this one, the best way to start is with the frog pose, which is a pretty alpha exercise. I like this one, and you can slowly move your knees higher and higher to make the exercise more difficult. Then we can do the headstand, which is great for finding that alignment and also finding our balance point. After that, we can move to the wall and use it to help us assist our handstand. Having our stomach up against the wall kind of helps us get rid of that fear of being upside down. And using our back up against the wall will help us get up into that position. And then we can go off of the wall and kind of hold it on its own for a bit and slowly just try to use the wall less and less. Now take away the wall and you got a handstand. And this can lead to cooler things in the future like the handstand pushup. I'm currently working towards it, practicing the frog pose to the handstand and handstand pushups up against the wall. But make sure you're being careful as you practice the handstand because it can get a little violent. 
On a side note, I think I have a concussion. And this is just an honorable mention, but the planche progressions are also super beneficial. Those exercises are great if you have a solid base of core strength, but if you don't, that's totally okay, and I'm gonna show you how you can build that up. The main parts of the core are the rectus abdominis, which can be broken into the upper and lower abs, which is the main muscle on where we're gonna see our six pack. But some other important ones are the obliques that run along the side and the serratus anterior, which is that cool one on the top. And having a six pack is cool, but once you get all of those showing, it gets really cool. But here's some core exercises for you though, starting with leg raises, which are great because you can do them at any fitness level. And the progressions are as followed, starting with knee raises and then going to bent leg raises where your legs are just a little bit less bent and then finishing with leg raises. And if it's too difficult to do from a hanging bar, you can move to the ground and do the same progressions there. And if you wanted to make it harder, you could do it on a place where you're pushing yourself up. But some tips for this one is that you want to make sure you're not putting an arch in your back and keeping the tension in your core. You also want to inhale on the way down and exhale on the way up. And lastly, try to eliminate momentum as much as possible. It can be hard, especially when you're hanging on the bar, but just try your best to eliminate that momentum and really feel it in your core instead of just swinging your feet up. But when we work out like this, we're gonna be hitting it more like a normal muscle. Instead of doing long plank holds or high repetition crunches, we're gonna be hitting it with sets and reps. If you wanted to add it in your workout, you can do three sets of 10 to 15 reps and just try to pick a progression where you fail in that 10 to 15 rep range. Another one we can do to hit that main abdominal muscle is decline sit-ups. This one can be hit in the same way leg raises are, and if you want to add weight to the top of your chest to make it a little bit more difficult, you always can. If that's not available though, you can always do some other core exercises at home, like the V-sit, toe touches, the hollow body hold, just to name a few. As for the obliques, like I stated before, we can hit these with side planks, but some other exercises that are also beneficial would be the Russian twist and leg raises with a twist. For the Russian twist, you want to make sure you're feeling it in your obliques as you move back and forth and try to keep your legs as straight as possible. Depending on your fitness level, you can always bend them though to make it easier. And for the serratus, we can do this variation of knee raises. To perform this, push your shoulder blades into protraction and try to round your back as much as possible. And it's okay if you can't go that high. Eventually you're gonna improve and you're still gonna be targeting your core even if you can't go all the way to the top. And you can also do tucked planche variations to hit that muscle as well. I think this is like a cool forgotten muscle. You know, it's like a hidden gem. So yeah, all these exercises are gonna help you get a solid foundation and also make your core pop. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's just really hard work. You gotta eat in a calorie deficit or maintain calories, depending on where your body's at, and hit core to make them pop. And that's all we can really do. So just do those two things and stay consistent with it. And you'll see your core just kind of go ka-chow. I really like this guy's video on how to stay in a calorie deficit. He just did such a great job explaining it. I think training calisthenics is a great way to go about it though because it will always challenge you with something new. And just through going through the process of trying to learn these new things, your body's gonna change as a result. But there's a ton of ways to get a six pack and most of it's diet. So this is just the way I went about it. Calisthenics to pop my core out and eating in a calorie deficit. But thanks for watching. Have a great day. Peace.